Hi. I've been asked to share the story of Jake. And that's, that's a story that's neat, it's a story that's wonderful, it's a story that's hard to tell. Jake is one of 13 children. He has six brothers and seven sisters. And he is one of the uni most unique persons I know. He was a little boy who loved to laugh. And talking never came easy for Jake. And he didn't start talking until he was a little older in life. When he was young, he fell from a bed and nearly cut his tongue in half, and because of that, it was hard for him to say certain things, and so talking wasn't something he was really good at, being able to express himself. But he loved to laugh, and he was always there, ready to give you a smile. and a helping hand. Um, he loved to help. His greatest joy as a little boy came when he was doing something. For somebody. And that didn't quit when he got older. Um, he was homeschooled like all his siblings. And I guess if anybody should be in prison, it should be me, because I'm the one that taught them from the Constitution as their main study, of course. Much of their writings, I would have them copy from the Constitution, and I would have them explain in their own words what it meant to them. So we grew up loving the Constitution. Many of our books that we read were on the great man of our nation, their history, what they meant, what they were made out of. And Jake loved the story of a hero, and he loved the story of good man. Another character about Jake was he loved the underdog. From the time he was little, he couldn't stand a bully. And his love to protect his brothers, his nephews, his nieces, and all that was around him. Jake learned about the Bundys and what was going on through a long process. When I was a young girl growing up in Canada, my father told me about a rancher in Nevada that was fighting for his land and for his home and for his livelihood. And that just so happened to be the Bundys. So even as a young girl, I knew the name. We grew up on a ranch, I grew up on a ranch, and I loved the land, I loved the animals, I loved to work the land, and I wanted my kids to have a feeling for that. And so we've always had animals, always had a garden, always worked hard to produce what we wanted and needed, and Jake learned to work hard, and he learned to be committed. Jake loved to act, and even with his speech, he became a great actor. He was in several plays, both in the community and in a town next to us in Roman, where he went and he helped high school kids excel in um, play acting. And he loved, he just absolutely loved to help them learn their part so that when they did a good job, he would be so excited to have someone else do a good job. It meant so much to him because he knew how much it meant to him. And he loved to see people do good. One thing he wrote in a, a paper where he was applying for an acting job, he said, through the ups and downs of the project, in which he's talking about a movie that him and his brothers did, it was a western that they filmed one summer with real guns, real horses, and everything. They did two movies, and it took them all summer. And that's the project he's talking about. 
I learned that keeping a positive attitude will make all the difference in the world. And although happiness may improve upon hard work, there is no substitute for putting everything you have into what you do 100%. And that's the way Jake was. If he felt something was right, he was committed all the way. And so he wanted to go down and meet these people in Oregon and know for himself what kind of men they were and what they were fighting for. And so that's why he went. And when he went down there, he learned to love these men. When he first came back, he couldn't praise them enough for their honor, for their dedication, for the things that they stood for and for the right they felt. And he said, Mom, he says, you know, he says, they've never hurt anybody. Anybody can come into this refuge. It didn't matter if it was law enforcement, FBI, or citizens. Everybody was welcome. They came in freely and they walked out freely. He says, no one was ever pushed to do anything that they didn't want to do or stopped from doing anything. He absolutely loved the time he had down there. And he learned to love them. And I'll never forget the day he called after they murdered Lavoie. He called, and with great emotion, he told us how much he loved us, and that he didn't want us to forget him. He honestly called to say goodbye because he didn't think he was coming home. They felt like if they had what they had done to Lavoy in murdering him, that they would be next. And so we didn't think he was going to come home. It was after many hours of negotiation between certain people that Jake decided to come out upon the condition that he would not be arrested then or later. And this was the condition that he came. And when he got home, he wanted so bad to meet with the town people in Plains and tell them of all the things that he learned about these men and the goodness in them and what they stood for. But due to the warrant coming out for his arrest, he wasn't able to do that. And we spent many a night not knowing where he was, not knowing he was warm. And my prayer was that he'd just be safe. When we learned of his arrest, it was even worse in some ways because now he was at the hands of people who didn't really care about him or his life and so it's a different kind of worry. We still wonder if the FBI is going to stop who they have or if they're going to come after more. And when he was not home and wondered where he was, we didn't know if our nights were going to be safe or if the FBI was going to be at our door. And it was a whole different way of living because I had been taught all my life to love people, to trust people, and that your word meant something, and that had been passed on to Jake. And he trusted people, he loved people, and he loved to serve people. When we were helping a 92-year-old vet by the name of Ren Bodecker, Jake was always at his side. He would always come with me to the court hearings to be there for Ren. When he was sick, it was Jake who went over to stay with him to make sure he had company, because I wasn't able to with other children at home. And so Jake would stay with him and make sure he was okay. So Jake saw firsthand what the justice system had done to this older gentleman who had served our country faithfully 
He had watched him take his home, his money, his retirement, and eventually take his life because of the stress that he put this old man through. So Jake had no faith in a justice system that is broken. And I wonder now what's going to free him. But I say to the public, it's not just about Jake. He's my son. But there's others out there that suffer. He is not the only one. All the men that they have taken, the 42 that they've arrest, arrested now, but the millions and hundreds of people that have gone down before them that are forgotten in prisons have been in there for a week, three months, six months, five years, and not even had a trial. It's a much bigger picture that needs to be looked at by all humanity. And I wonder what's, what is it going to take for the people of this nation, for the people across the world, to wake up, to regain their conscience that they have given up, to put down their TV, their newspapers, and to begin talking to their neighbors again, to find out what life is really about and what makes life worthwhile.